So one of the things that um, folks comment on a lot is their inability to kind of imply chord changes when they're playing up the neck or single note lines. So the best thing to do in my experience has been to teach people how to do that in the open position um, where we have you know basic chords that we already kind of understand at an at, uh, now like at an intuitive level because we've been playing down here since we were you know young on the instrument so to speak and as we come up we start to connect back to our roots okay so um let me show you the basic thing that i'm going to be doing here uh we can do it at a two i think it's important also to kind of explore the same idea as close as you can basically reproduce the same progression in two keys at least all right and so i'm going to choose c and G okay now let's start let's start out in the G okay okay and we're gonna start out with this repeating lick okay and that's sliding up from five into six that's intervals not frets so that's from the D to the E then back with our index and we kind of are already pre barring there on the G and then we pivot up and let go Back to the open G. Okay. And then we make our chord change into C. So what are we playing over there? To C. We just outlined this kind of major pentatonic with a little sassy blues. Okay, so now we're going to take a uh, secondary dominant. Okay, that's going to mean uh, a chord that isn't really within the key diatonically. That's, you know, kind of that that A minor is what's normally in the key of G here. But we're gonna take A7, okay? And then have that resolve to our five chord of D. So again, we're gonna keep using this, we're gonna keep going back to this little lick. Okay? To four, back to one. kind of come up into like that's kind of slick up into the third of that of that A chord okay if we want to get really fancy pants we can go or So that's gonna be kind of like a diminished chord, right? To our sixth dominant. A, back to our two dominant, five dominant, okay? So there's a couple of, there's a lot of, um, Dominant seven, like flat seven chords, you know, these dominant chords. So we've got that kind of thing. And we've also got, okay, rather than, again, that's a non-diatonic sixth. Normally that sixth would be a minor chord, right? But we're going to make it this dominant seven sound, okay? And then we end up with that, that kind of sound where where from that D note, it kind of chromatically descends back to the third of our home chord, okay? So overall, we're kind of creating this progression.
Now, the reason why I throw in all those uh, non-diatonic seventh chords is, A, they sound really cool. They get used all the time. And frankly, it forces you to reconsider the modes, right? You're not, you, you can't think, ah, I just play, I just blow G major scales over these four chords, which you can if you're doing a diatonic turnaround, right? If you do that, all those chords, in particular the, the six and the two chord, right? They don't change. You don't have to change. You just play G major through all that as opposed to when we do it like this. We now have to contend with that, that G sharp. And then when we come here, we have to contend with the C sharp instead of the C natural. And then the five is the same, okay? So that's why I, I'm choosing this as like my little, it's kind of an invented obstacle course for me as a player. But this is what I, I as, a, as a devoted practitioner of the instrument, I've kind of decided like, hey, sometimes it's important to understand how to play into these these kind of lumpy changes where you have to actually think about how do I imply that, like the fact that it's actually an A7 like a, with a major third, right? Rather than that, right? So again, we're gonna use this hinge lick. We're gonna repeat that all the time, right? It's gonna get kind of old for you probably after a while, but. Okay, so that opening line, right, it plays a, on one of the main things that, that bluegrass and to some extent, you know, um, all American music that stems out of blues relies on, which is this, this kind of mix, I call it barbecue, which makes no sense to most people until I explain it, where we've got the sweetness of that sixth and then this kind of oddly dissonant sound between the three and the flat three rubbing up against each other. Okay, now when you play it like that, like a block chord, it definitely isn't that sonorous, right? But when you hear... Right, there I am playing the G, G major, and one of the notes I'm hitting hardest is that B flat. And so that, that you know... a flat three but the way you incorporate it is what you need to become artful with and uh, the other thing is using that sixth that's what keeps it sounding less like um less it's, it's a brighter more sweet sound okay if we if we using the flat seven it doesn't really have the same kind of uh bluegrassy kind of this is more like relying on the major pentatonic sound used with that and then adding in that flat three periodically to give it a little bit more sass. Okay, so that lick. Okay, get that. Five, six, five, one. open string pull-offs okay now we basically just spelled out the G chord and we're gonna walk up to our four right so that's kind of the thing is like we're gonna take these uh, I either scale ideas or arpeggio ideas and they spell out the chords and this is how you start thinking about okay I've got this little solo down here and I learn these lines, they get embedded in my head, and the next thing you know, you're going. And you're getting the same. Okay, of course, those are gonna be similar notes and some similar patterns, and it all starts to translate and just kind of migrate up the neck. And hopefully over time, you become a more musical soloist as opposed to just kind of thinking, ah, I'm playing, a, you know, just C scales and G scales and stuff like that. All right, so one, two, one, two, three, and. Okay, so a little cross pick in there over that C chord. So down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up. Okay, that kind of thing. It's like a forward roll. So 
The real bitch of this is that, you know, you've got an alternate pick each one. Uh, some people do. All right. I can't do it. That's the George Shuffler way. I do more like alternate pick, like. Great exercise, right? So I do one, two, three, one, two, three. Right? One, two, three, one, two, three, and then a little pair of notes. Okay? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight notes in the measure. There are eight notes, right? One, one. Okay, so. Three up into three, back to root six five one. Okay, I'm gonna that vocabulary, that sound is gonna get pegged really quite hard here. Well, let's find a nice artful way of getting into the into the two dominant chord there. Okay. Do that that's kind of nice okay and then we can go we could go right here how we're bringing out the harmony within there ba -ba right so Keep going further in with the thing, right? see some of these chromatic approach notes and little sequences that are baked in that kind of own the chords, right? See how there's these chromatic approach notes that come up into the third of the chord and it gives the the listener that sensation of uh, kind of tension and release into these chord notes which kind of imply those chord changes, right? So if you don't come up into that that money note, that C sharp there over the A, you're not gonna really give the listener the experience of, of you, I don't know, making your point. It's kind of like making your point in an argument or something like that, or you gotta tag all these little things here. So let's look at our target notes for over top of that, that turnaround, okay? So we gotta do, basically imply a flat seven over that G. So that we release nicely into that C chord. Then we've got that diminished sound. Okay, and then again into the E7, into an A7. So we're gonna need to hit that C sharp. Over the E7, we need to hit that G sharp. And over the D7, we need to hit that. F sharp. Okay, so those are the th those are the thirds of those chords that we're targeting. Okay, so from the top, or why don't we do? basically right just like that's fine we don't have to keep going nuts with everything okay back to G and then our lick see how that's so bring this then to our 
back into the four chord. So what we're really doing is targeting that F so that we can release it into that E note, which is the third of our, e, uh, our C chord, right? So. And then up into A7. And then. To our E7. A7. D7. back to G, right? So this is where things get kind of crazy because there's a lot of chromaticism and we're going from into roots, fifths, and thirds periodically, and there's a lot of approach notes and stuff like that. So it, it gets kind of heady for a second, even though it's a folky kind of thing. So strap on your, your thinking cap, all right? And then the ideas start to slowly migrate up. You got to take this stuff super slow, and I'm sorry if I'm throwing some of the um, less experienced players for a loop here. Um, that's not my intention, all right? It's, and if I'm not explaining it well, that's, ju that's just my own shortcomings as a teacher, so my apologies. Right, cross picking. Then again. seven of the, over the G chord. Now we're about to go into the C chord. And then again. Okay, now I'm making that really easy to hear. Bum, 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 bum. Okay. And you don't have to always spoon feed a listener or a student. Okay, but I actually kind of like that. We've been doing a lot of stuff that's been uh, right on the beat. And now we're doing something that's, um, you know, it's like a halftime triplet. One, two, three, right? So we were in the process of figuring out how to get down to that E7 chord, right? And so we made it to the E by going halftime triplets. But I think that at that point we need to now go to Right? We've run out of beats, so we can't continue to arpeggiate that E chord any further after we do. That's going to be the last little bit of our solo here. So, one, two, three, one. start being able to get familiar down here and then we start getting a little bit more and a little bit more and a little bit more all right now i hope you can see what we've done we've taken that progression and we've arpeggiated it we found a few little licks we found a few little pleasant anomalies where we can rub little ideas where the open strings kind of sustain while we're fretting other notes behind it and all that stuff lends to the like genre specific idiomatic nature of you know, what we're playing and, and these are just my ideas these aren't necessarily um classic bluegrass licks or anything funny like that i just just kind of noodling around here and over the years have come up with some of this stuff now let's the real trick is now to not be shackled to just playing that in g Okay, and that, that would be like kind of the next thing is to take it to C. Now we can, the reason why I'm choosing C is because it's not that different. We just have got uh, some tuning issues to, to, you know, account for between the B and the G, right? These guys, they're, they're not tuned the way everybody else is. And then after the B, 
then we go back. So it's kind of like this weird kind of, it's kind of weird thing that happens right here on the guitar every time. And C, right? We've got the, we don't have an open C string on a guitar. Okay, so out of C, let's look at that same little lick. That would be, or something akin to that, right? So we're coming up from five into six. Again, we're new home key here. Flat three rubs up against the major three. Thank God for that open string. We can get back to that fretted note. Again. So that's kind of telling the same little story. Uh, there's no real rhythm associated with that yet, right? But we, we're looking at certain shapes and sounds that are gonna yield those sounds. Now we have to figure out how to like make the changes in time, right? So we're used to that. So that's accounting for the tuning, right? We have to come there and then back to C instead of, instead of, we're gonna go, right? And then back to, so F. That's even better. So over top of that would, Seven to F to the diminished sound, and then again. So A seven, D seven, G seven, and then back to C. So if you don't know that, that's the six of our uh, in C. That A7, D7, G7, C7, really helpful shapes. And if you look on my page, I think on the YouTube thing, it's called like Descending Dominance or something. It basically teaches that whole idea about, right? And then, um, so here we are kind of, you know, wandering a little bit, but pardon my, uh, Pardon the wandering nature of my dialogue here, but. Right, so that's A7, then. So. F, C. Uh, that would be over the D chord. hip how you take the flat seven of the F chord that's the fours flat seven and then, and then basically ram that flat seven into the flat three of the one chord right little 
little sneaky bit is if we're looking at a D7 chord, so D, so that's root, flat three, into the third of a chord, flat seven, tonic, all right? Or you can use open strings. And back to the C, so that was da ba do ba da ba da do do ba Kind of see how you, you ultimately will find familiarity with certain lines you'll be able to start crafting your own things and the next thing you know you've you kind of own these first five frets and then all you have to do is just keep kind of creeping up it's a war of attrition friends <laughs> and slowly but surely we end up owning more and more of the neck until it finally all repeats and then we have the laborious task of figuring out how to play all these open string licks played in closed position because we don't have an open string to rely on for our, is like, you know, okay, like that's different than, so the good news is that you can do that, that's fine, once you learn, right, you don't have to go, that sounds weird, right, jumping the octave, it's a weird thing, so, so that's out of C, so that same little look, you have to learn it in closed positions. You can play it everywhere. All right. So on and on it goes, friends. It's it's it, the there is no there is no end. That's the coolest and most terrifying thing about this. It's definitely a, a, a slow grind, right? And every single day, you have to approach it anew. Okay. I mean, really. All right. And sometimes you have to take a pause to get your right hand or your left hand like synced up or actually the playing mechanics together and but the good news is like it's not going anywhere and neither am i all right so thank you again for tuning in to this kind of long-winded couch lesson here on the acoustic and uh, like i said if i fell short of my goals here that's uh i guess that's on me but i'm, I'm trying my best for y'all and i hope i can share uh what i know and that you'll continue to come back and subscribe to Whatever it is that you're getting out of this, um, I really do appreciate you stopping by. All right, so signing off from Bethany Beach, this is Jack Devine for Jack Snacks. I appreciate it very much. Take care.